Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I haven't uploaded in a while and I've been meaning to. I really wanted to start the new year on like a good note. What happened? I got a bit sick after my birthday. It wasn't the Rona. But I got sick and I was sick for like two weeks. It was really like racking coughs. I think that was just like a general bug going around England because a lot of people seem to get the same. So I had me gone for about like the first two weeks of February. And then for the last like two weeks of February, I've been making a documentary, a mockumentary. So I've been scripting and then sorting out the budget and the crew and the studio and X, Y, Z. And as the month develops, I'll tell you a little bit more about it and I'll release a trailer when I get around to actually editing it, my God editing it hate editing it at the best of times that's why i don't do most of my own editing anymore but this you know my vision and stuff i need to not as in my art uh, my mental vision not as in like my actual vision 2020 bruv i need to edit it myself which is fine but we had about like four different camera angles and we had to do a billion and one takes because i was doing it in conjunction with my mate kieran his videographer company videographing company ex anima you can follow them on instagram and stuff they helped did like the production and whatnot my god we had to do a lot of takes and i got like actors i'm just laying it all loose right now instead of you know building a bit of suspense i got actors so you'll have to see my terrible attempting to be a presenter of a documentary acting um which is put to shame by the actors who can actually act but look I'll make a deal with you guys. If all of you, all 200,000 of you, watch that documentary, right, and help me get my money back from the budget, then I will take some acting lessons, all right? I feel like that's a fair transaction. Give it a view when it comes out. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about yet because you'll wait for the trailer. I think you're gonna like it. I bloody hope so anyway. So let's get on with today's video. Today's video is House of Night, book four, Untamed. Yes, I went. <laughs> back to the house of night because i want to get this series done within the next two years we would like to thank our wonderful agent meredith bernstein without whom the house of night wouldn't have been born damn it meredith why do you have to play us like that thank you to the fans of the house of night we appreciate you you are welcome i feel like i am single-handedly reviving the house of night series if the cast duo get that tv show finally that they've been trying to get for the past 15 years you know who to call for a cameo i'll have some acting lessons by then i swear chapter one the core core cawing of one stupid crow kept me up all night well more accurately all day because you know i'm a vampire fledgling and we have that whole issue of night and day being turned around anyway i got like zero sleep last night slash day but my crappy non-sleep is currently the easiest thing to deal with since life really sucks when your friends are pissed at you i should know i'm zoe redbird currently the undisputed queen of making my friends piss land our favorite vampiric reprobate is back Grooming Persephone always helped me. Paul Breach, is that you? I'm calling the, I'm calling the police on myself. Zoe is complaining to her horse about her friends like totally hating on her because they are mean sluts. <laughs> they are mean sluts or something. It's just exposition dumping, which is useless because I've already read the first three books. Please look at those other three videos. And the memory of them is just forever burned into my skull. I'll be an archaeological wonder when my remains are dug up from underneath the ocean floor in a thousand years. Catching my reflection in the smooth glass window of the tack room, I automatically ran my fingers through my dark hair, trying to make it look not so bedheady. I'd been marked as a fledgling vampire and moved to the house tonight just over two months ago. Four books in two months. But already my hair was noticeably thicker and longer. Yeah, it's not just your hair getting noticeably thicker. Some of them were invisible, like the fact that I had an affinity for all five of the elements. Five seconds in and I'm already being reminded that Zoe is the greatest of all time, the GOAT. Quick Persephone, stampede me to death. It'll be less painful than this. Well, yesterday you had not one but three boyfriends. So the context here is she's complaining that her friends are mad at her for the events of the last book, not holding your hand. Just go watch that two hour long video. Cheers, thank you for the AdSense. But She's complaining and her friend's still mad at her, but it's only been one day because yesterday she had three, so it's literally been 
just a day since the last book ended. Give your friends a bit of space, give them a few more hours and they will eventually come around. It don't even take that long, trust me. Zoe hears a noise and shits herself. I shivered, having a walking over my grave moment as the night went from soft and misty to dark and malevolent. Hang on, dark and malevolent? Well, that's just silly. What I had heard was probably nothing more sinister than the wind rustling through the trees. Jeesh, I was losing it. Who are you talking to? I know you're talking to me, but you're not actually directly supposed to be talking to me because it'll cause a paradox and the whole universe will collapse. God willing, please hurry up. Anyway, nothingness attacks her hand. Good. It appears the book has become sentient and is revolting against its leader. Zoe uses the power of the elements and, well, not friendship because she's got no friends at the moment, to shoo the nothing away. Then Nyx gives Zoe a feeling to leave and go make up with her friends. Convenient, innit? I hovered for a second just outside the open doors to the busy dining hall, aka school cafeteria, watching the other kids talk easily and happily together. And I was almost overwhelmed with the sudden wish that I could just be like another fledgling. That I didn't have any extraordinary abilities or the responsibilities that went along with those abilities. You said abilities three times in less than one sentence. For a second, I wanted to be normal so bad that it was hard for me to breathe. I don't need acting lessons. <laughs> Except for when I'm around other people, it turns out. Do you know what I hate? Yeah, I take singing lessons, right? I like them. But sometimes my singing teacher will try to like, when we're doing a song, you know, I've got to work out what the words mean. Who are the lyrics for? Because you've got to get their head on. And oh, I can't do that stuff, man. I'm too British. I'm far too repressed to be like expressive and think of myself as a, I can't do that. So sometimes my singing teacher, Chafter, will make me like you know, say the words, but say the words as if you're acting them. And it's my least favorite thing ever. It like causes me pain because I can't get into that place of I don't know, not being self-conscious, not being very aware that I'm like, because I can't, Im and one of the actors in my mockumentary, he became the role that I'd expertly written, right? Expertly written. The script was like 99.5% me, 0.5% some people adding a line or two, but it was mostly me, my dark, malevolent brilliance coming from this mind. But you can see that he really became the character. I can't do that. At least when other people are around, can't do it. What? I forgot, this weren't a therapy session. <laughs> Shut up, sit down, have a glass of water, me and Zoe. I heard birdsong and smelled new cut grass and my spirit quivered <laughs> with silent drove in me as it acknowledged my powerful goddess given gifts of an affinity for each of the five elements, air, fire, water, earth and spirit. I know, stop it, shush. I wasn't normal. I wasn't like anyone else. Can you please be quiet for five minutes about how amazingly unique you are? She goes back to the cafeteria. I thought she was in the cafeteria. Anyway, I noticed that everyone seemed to be reacting to me with their usual mix of respect and awe, which meant my friends hadn't been talking crap about me to the masses. You know you should be able to trust that your friends won't go off and trash your reputation every time you have a little falling out. Yeah, she joins her friends. When I sat down, no one looked at me, but their easy chatter instantly died, which is something I totally hate. I mean, what's more awful than walking up to a group of you're supposed to be friends and having them all shut up so that you knew for sure that they were all talking about you. Ugh. I would say that not everyone's conversation revolves around you entirely, but I've read three of these books, so I know better than to say that. So what's up? I directed the question at Damien, knowing that my gay friend <laughs> was naturally the weakest link. You know that you don't have to point out that someone's gay. You know, they are also just people just existing on this mortal coil, yeah? Imagine that's how like you introduced your friend. Oh, this is my friend. Boris, my gay mate Boris. Ma imagine, shut up. Sadly, it was the twins who answered me and not gay and therefore more sensitive and polite Damien. What? Not shit, right twin, said Shawnee. That's right, twin, not shit. Cause we can't be trusted to know shit, Erin said. Twin, did you know that we're totally untrustworthy? Not until recently I didn't, twin. You, Shawnee said, didn't know till recently either, Erin finished. Like. It will be insufferable to listen to these people in real life. I don't know why she wants to be friends with them anyway, because they are annoying twin. Right, important, important footnote. In this book, Shawnee is caramel colored and I'm pretty sure by the next book, she's gonna be mocha colored or espresso or chocolate or latte or cappuccino. Pick your Starbucks drink color chart here. Zoe is all, oh my God, guys, did you notice that like outside is like too creepy right now? Jack comes over. Hi, Jack, I said, smiling at him. Jack and Damien are now together. Hello, they're gay. <laughs> my friends and I, along with anyone who's not narrow-minded and utterly judgmental, are cool with 
I'm in tears. <laughs> I love these books so much. <sighs> Here's a better way for any wannabe writers out there to show your character's sexuality. Here's how you would write the sentence. Jack and Damien are together. Full stop. Done. That's it. You don't need this whole like, hello, yeah, we're gay. <laughs> Not we're gay. They're gay and we're like totally cool with that. Unlike you, you're bigger, even though I say bigoted things all the time, I'm still totally cool with them being gay. I point out that they're gay every other like gay sentence, but do you know, Ugh. shut up. I wonder if the cast do have ever actually met a gay person in their life. Do you know, I'm, do you know what I mean? Stop it. I'm getting mad at the sound of my voice right now. Anyway, the real star of this book, Aphrodite appears. Chapter two, Aphrodite's mark has returned. It was ever so sweet of you to walk me to the dining hall. You're right. It shouldn't have taken two days to cut my vacation short. With all the craziness going on around here, it's best to stay on campus where we can be protected. And since you'll say you'll be stationed at the door of our dorm, that is definitely the most safe and attractive place to be. She practically purred at him. Jeesh, she was stank. Had I not been so surprised to see her, I would have made appropriate gagging noises, loud, obvious ones. Oh, let her live, miss. I have, two, I have three boyfriends and I'm cheating on all of them. Oh, don't be such a school teacher, Shawnee told him. Plus the point is Aphrodite is a hag and we were kind of hoping Nyx dumped her when that mark of hers disappeared. More than kind of hoping, twin, Erin said. Says the rudest girls in these books. They are awful, like awful, awful, judgmental, nasty people. Everyone stared at Aphrodite. I tried to force salad down my throat. See, here's the deal. Aphrodite used to be the most popular. Why are you still talking to me? I'm gonna get a restraining order if you don't stop. Aphrodite sits with them. So Erin is like, you can't sit with us and threatens to punch her. Like just straight up threatens to punch her. Despite them being concerned about her welfare at the end of the third book. Consistency don't exist around here. The twins didn't say anything, but Damien's voice sounding uncharacteristically flat and emotionless came from the other side of me. We agreed to that, but we didn't agree to be friends with her. I didn't say I wanted to be your friend, Aphrodite said. Ditto, bitch, the twins said together. Grow up, please, I beg. All the cats at the house at night run into the cafeteria and cause a ruckus. A dog bursts in, followed by a new student. This is boyfriend number four. His name is James Stark and his dog is his familiar, though generally cats tend to be familiars to the vampires. But despite... The dog having the same relationship as like Nala has to Zoe. The adult vampires keep being like, no, we can't have a dog here. Despite all of them recognizing how animal familiars are to them. Basically they're being racist to the dog. Stark doesn't take their shit though. I would leave. No one's stopping me from having my animals, dogs, rats, cats, whatever around. Shut your pie holes, <laughs> book. Neferet appears. I watched the new kid's eyes widen as he took in her gorgeousness. It was so annoying that everybody automatically felt stupid at the first glance of our high priestess and my nemesis, Neferet. Are you five years old? Well, priestess, she's a lab, but you're not the first person who's, who's said she looks bear-like. Her paws are definitely big enough to be a bear's. Check it out. Disbelieving, I watched as the kid completely turned his back on Neferet and told the dog, give me five, Dutch. The dog obediently lifted a decidedly massive paw and slapped Stark's hand with it. Good girl, he said, ruffling her floppy ears. Okay, I had to admit, it was a cute trick. Do you live under a rock? How have you never seen a dog do that before? Anyway, Stark is super special and talented at archery because of course he is. He's like the best archer of all time. Neferet introduces Stark to Zoe and makes Zoe responsible for helping Stark's dog. The high priestess smiled at the room in general, not looking at Aphrodite or me. How very generous of our Zoe to accept Aphrodite back into the bosom of the Dark Daughters, especially as she'll be held responsible for Aphrodite's conduct. But then our Zoe seems to be comfortable with a great deal of responsibility. She did look at me then and the hatred in her gaze made my breath catch in my throat. Do be careful that you don't strangle under so much self-inflicted pressure, Zoe dear. Then, as if she'd thrown a switch, her face was filled with sweetness and light again as she beamed at the new kid. Welcome to the house of Night Stark. How does no one else notice this clear switch in Nefra's personality? How do people not know the meanness and the clear threat to Zoe that Neferet is? How has no one else cottoned onto this? Idiots. Chapter three. I think your dog is pretty, Jack said, leaning around Damien to get a better look at Duchess. I mean, she's big, but she's still pretty. She won't bite, will she? Not if you don't bite her first, Stark said. Oh, ew, Jack said. I'd get dog hair in my mouth and that'd be nasty. Is Jack five? Do we need to check Damien's hard drive? Stark, this is Jack. He's Damien's boyfriend. I decided to get the introductions and the possible, oh no, he's a bleep cigarette. 
issues out of the way. Um, Zoe, babe, the only person using that word around here is you. So accepting my ass. You know, dogs are a lot louder than cats, Jack said. No, seriously, are you five or are you just stupid? Why is he talking like this? Like, well done, Captain Obvious. Aphrodite, presumably because she got bored of this inane rubbish, leaves. She's actually not as bad as she pretends to be, I told the twins. They gave me disbelieving looks and I shrugged. It's just that she pretends to be bad a lot. Well, we say please, just please to her crappy attitude, Erin said. Pot, kettle, etc. I'd still like to see his butt twin, Shawnee said. Then she glanced over at me and smiled. It was a reserved version of her old friendly grin, but at least it wasn't the sarcastic weariness she'd been treating me with for the past couple of days. See, they're over being mad already and it took less than 24 hours. What a load of fuss over nothing. Zoe spends a paragraph picking apart Stark's appearance, which... You know, there's a double standard there. Okay, so they were right. Stark was cute. He was medium tall, not quarterback tall like my human ex-boyfriend Heath, or abnormally gorgeous Superman tall like my fledgling turned vampire ex-boyfriend Eric. <laughs> this is God. This hurts. It hurts to say out loud. It goes from like my brain and then like filters to my mouth, but it's you know this is gonna be like stuck in my head rent free for the next few days. This hurts. But he wasn't short either. Actually, he was about Damien's height. I don't know how tall Damien is. This isn't helpful. He was kind of on the thin side. I'm upset. But I can see my, I'm upset and it's like not even 25 minutes into this video. I think that's a record. He was kind of on the thin side, but I can see his muscles for his old t-shirt and his arms were definitely yummy. He had cute, messy guy hair, that sandy colour between blonde and brown. His face was okay too. I'm sure he would be so flattered to hear that his face was okay. Thanks, babe. I'm actually going to cry and I don't know why. I think I'm hormonal. I'm always hormonal. With a strong chin, straight nose, big brown eyes and nice lips. So dissected into separate parts. was <laughs> okay looking kid. This is not normal behaviour. He was an okay looking kid. As I watched, this is something like a serial killer does. This is like some Jeffrey Dahmer stuff. Like, what are you doing? Dissecting him into separate parts. Mm, well, his eyebrow on the left looks nice, but his one on the right is too bushy. It makes him butters. Shut up. As I watched him, I realised that what took him from meh to hot was his intensity and his confidence. He moved like everything he did was deliberate, but that the deliberateness was tinged with sarcasm. I couldn't punch myself in the face in a minute. It was like he was a part of the world and at the same time he was flipping it off. <laughs> and yes, it was weird that I got that about him so quickly. She literally like looked at him for all of two seconds, shut up. She gets him because he's her soulmate. I think she ends up cheating on him too. Give it a rest for a weak woman, please. Anyway, Jack is all MMG, James, Stark. He's like the best archer in the whole world. Did you remember reading about him online? As if that's a regular conversational topic against amongst teens anyway. I couldn't tell you who the best archer is in the world as an adult right now. Robin Hood, Michael Flatley, no idea. Well, shit, slap me and... <laughs> I got in I got into that well too much for what this what the what the line's about to be. Well shit, slap me and call me impaired, twin. No? No thanks, don't want to. Twin, I'm gonna try to like his dog, Erin said. Of course we are twin, Shawnee said. I know I didn't like them for a reason. Can't trust anyone who doesn't like dogs and I'm gonna die on that hill, thank you very much. Zoe goes to find Aphrodite and we are treated to this gem. I was Oh for God's sake. Give it a rest, cast duo. I was standing in front of the big oak door like a special needs slash special services student. I really want to make spaghetti bolognese. I can make, right, because obviously, you know, vegan here. UK, right? The meatless mints, the meatless farm mints that you can, <laughs> I don't know why I'm making this gesture because that's not, that's not anything. The meatless farm mints is what I use to make my, my spaghetti bolognese. It's so banging. Are you joking? Anyway, that sentence, unnecessary just it's just unnecessary chapter four i had barely touched my door handle when it was pulled open and aphrodite grabbed my wrist would you get your butt in here shit you are as slow as a fat kid on crutches zoe descriptive and yet also unnecessary it's a very rare aphrodite l stevie ray is climbing around outside the window but they pull her indoors stevie ray is pissed that all of her stuff is gone but she is aware that that's what the vampires do when a kid dies they take away their stuff there's no need to take it personally you aren't special despite being zoe's most special friend aphrodite reveals that she is human maybe her mark is still gone 
she had just created one with eyeliner earlier. Okay, so firstly, this following dialogue is a disgrace. Uh, Aphrodite, even though you're human, you are definitely not a normal hu- Stop it. Normal human, Stevie Ray said. She's dust flying around. I do hoover. <laughs> There's just dust flying. It's probably coming from me. Do you know that's what dust is, yeah? Just like, like, dust is coming off me right now. Anyway, what does that mean? I asked. Aphrodite shrugged. Doesn't mean shit to me. Stevie Ray sighed. You know, you're lucky that you turned into a human and not a wooden boy, because with all that lying you're doing, your nose would be like a mile long. Aphrodite shook her head in disgust. Again with the bad G-rated movie analogy. I don't know why I couldn't have just died and gone to hell. At least I wouldn't be bombarded with Disney there. Would you just tell me what the hell's going on? I said. Better explain it to her. She's almost cussing, Aphrodite said snidely. You're so hateful, I should have eaten you when I was dead, Stevie Ray said. No one talks like this. Shut up. And secondly, you should have eaten your contrified mum when you were dead, Aphrodite. Oh God, Aphrodite said, bowing, bowing up. Should it be blowing up or bowing up? I don't know. Bowing up like she thought she was black. What? And thirdly, Zoe does not need a new BFF, Stevie Ray yelled. Why is she obviously so in love with Zoe? Like who is this needy? Aphrodite still gets her visions. So she no longer has access to her near immortality, increased strength, special powers, apparently thicker hair, but she gets to keep her traumatizing visions of people dying or being blown up or whatever. Why? Because she was a high school bully. Seems a bit overkill to me, but okay. Nyx works in mysterious ways. I saw vampires slaughtering humans and humans killing vampires right back. I saw a world filled with violence and hatred and darkness. And in the darkness, I saw creatures that were so horrible I couldn't tell what they were. I, I couldn't even keep looking at them. I saw the end of everything. Aphrodite's voice was as haunted as her face. I saw all of it happening because you were dead, Zoe. Your death made it happen. Get wrecked. Chapter five. You know it doesn't mean it will come true for sure, Stevie Ray said. Shut up, Stevie Ray. Stop ruining this for me. Aphrodite describes her vision. It wasn't. I was seeing shadows inside shadows inside darkness. Useless description. Thanks for nothing. Zoe dies several different ways in Aphrodite's visions. Aphrodite, I will pay you a fiver and a packet of crisps for those visions on video. Thank you. I remember another thing about the vision. There was something close by the water that looked like a real palace on an island all of its own, which means tasteful old money, probably European, and not some tacky upper middle class version of, ooh, I have money, let's go buy an RV. What are you talking about? Also, why do Americans think that Europe, the European continent, is some type of paradise? Well, I can only speak for England. It's just chavs standing outside of Tesco's and betting shops on the high street. That's it, really. Zoe tells them that Lauren is dead. Zoe, that's so awful, Stevie Ray said. I could hear the tears in her voice. Grow up, get a life, as she put her arm around me. Y'all were like Romeo and Juliet. Are you thick, you little twit? <laughs> so aggressive. He was a predator. She was a minor. It's like Romeo and Juliet if Romeo was a, a, a teacher. In one of Aphrodite's visions, Zoe gets beheaded. Oh no. Anyway, Stevie Ray let out a big long breath. You have a point, Aphrodite. She turned to me. We got to keep you alive, Zoe. Not just because we love you more than white bread, because you got to save the world. Oh great, I'm supposed to save the world. All I could think was, and I used to stress about geometry. This dialogue is so Nickelodeon, it kills me. Like, like it's a weird mix, right? Because on one hand, it's Aphrodite's visions, death, destruction, Zoe getting decapitated, blood spurting out of her neck stump, like all of that good stuff, yeah? And then it's like, and I used to stress about geometry. <laughs> this book can't decide what it wants to be. Graphic violence with underage sex scenes. And decapitations, that's what I just said. Hmm. Or, and proms tomorrow, if anyone's ever seen that. I think that's like Akira if they made an American version. Come on, Canada, we gotta go save the world because it's proms tomorrow. Shut up. Chapter six. Okay, you guys are gonna have to back up. What friends are you? And then my words broke off as I realized who they must be talking about. Stevie Ray, do not tell me you're still hanging out with those gross kids from the tunnel. Z. The lack of empathy that Zoe has for the one fledgling chosen who is going to save the world is astounding. They are talking about the other red fledglings who all died in a brutal and very public manner, literally drowning in their own blood to death, only to be brought back from the dead as abominations for Neferet in her army against the humans. But no, they are just gross because they aren't Zoe's bestie. She is the worst. They all argue. Stevie Ray is the only one who is in the right about this because Stevie Ray wants to help the red fledglings. It's not 
not the fledglings fault that they were forced to turn into murderers after all nix i said making them both look, turn to look at me with question marks in their face nix gets to pick who's worth saving not me not stevie ray not even you aphrodite bro what nix could put a stop to all of this rubbish in an instance if she really wanted to so don't give me that all-powerful god my ass and like okay is Nyx the type of god where she's created the fledglings and created the humans and created the vampires and they tried in the first book to say to to make it scientific and say that there's a type of gene that turns humans into vampires but that gene was obviously put there by Nyx herself right and so Nyx must decide up in paradise who is turning into a fledgling right Nyx gets to pick who's worth saving it's like the christian bible isn't it like why are you creating these people just to damn some of them guess i forgot about Nyx. aphrodite said turning her face away from us to hide the pain in her eyes it's not like the goddess wants much to do with a human kid anyway that's not true i said Nyx's hand is still on you aphrodite the goddess is majorly at work here if she didn't care about you she would have taken away your visions when she took away your mark as i spoke i got that feeling i often get when i absolutely know i'm saying the right thing Aphrodite was a pain in the ass, but for some reason, she was important to our goddess. What in the Stockholm Syndrome is this? <sighs> yes, our goddess took away everything good about being a vampire from you because you did some bullying and left you with the worst, most traumatic parts, but it's only because she cares. Stevie Ray, you really can't let those kids eat people. Not even street people. Stevie Ray got her arm burnt in the sunlight because direct sunlight will kill red vampires, but she healed most of it by drinking some blood. Stevie Ray, honey, let me be clear that I'm not judging you, but you didn't eat a street person or anything like that after you caught on fire, did you? What did the cast duo have against have against the homeless? Like, seriously, it is very telling that they don't see homeless people as real people. Stevie Ray leaves, finally. Aphrodite warns Zoe that Stevie Ray has changed due to everything that's happened to her, so Zoe gets pissy despite feeling the same trepidation herself. Did you ever think that maybe she wanted me to go with her because Stevie Ray doesn't want me to spend any time with you? That's stupid. Why would she care? She's my best friend, not my boyfriend. Maybe someone should tell Stevie Ray that. I might be jumping the gun, but I swear the whole Stevie Ray has changed storyline thing goes nowhere chapter seven before we get into this chapter make sure that you check out my merch store i'm wearing some of my merch right now i still have the winter sale on which is 20 percent off across the website so make sure you check out some merchandise at ayclothing.tmill.com zoe's other stupid friends are suddenly here go away we want to talk to you z damien said and we're glad to see she's leaving shorty said glaring aphrodite yeah, don't let the door hit your skinny ass on the way out, Erin said. You can't convince me that Shawnee and Erin aren't bullies. If they had been Aphrodite's friends in the first place, they would have fit right in with her, terrorising all the other students. They are consistently vile. No need for it. I trust her, I said. Okay, maybe I didn't trust her 100%, but Nyx was working through her. I mean, you've got to trust her more than your actual mate. She's been there for you more often than not. Which is ironic because we're having trust issues with you, Shawnee said. Nerd herd, you make no damn sense, Aphrodite said. In one breath, you're all, oh yes, we tr trust Nyx. And in the next, you're saying you have trust issues with Zoe. Zoe is the fledgling. No one, vamp or fledgling, has ever been so gifted by Nyx. Get a clue, would you? Aphrodite rolled her eyes. Finally, some logic around it. Aphrodite tells them of her visions. You pissed us off, Z, Shawnee said, looking almost as pale as Damien. But we don't want you to die, Erin finished, looking equally upset. I'd just die if you died, Jack said, sniffling. Then he reached for Damien's hand. You don't even know her. You have known her for less than one week. And you, for some reason, got offended by her sleeping with Lauren, despite not even knowing her. The end of the third book. Spoiler alert, Jack is one of the most useless characters in the series and I can't wait until he dies. Well then, you're going to have to get over yourselves and be the buddy buddy dork pack again, Aphrodite says. Since when have you cared whether Zoe lives or dies, Damien said. Since all of the last two books, you absolute twit. Since I'm working for Nyx and not myself, and Nyx gives a shit about Zoe, therefore I give a shit about Zoe. And it's a good thing I do. You're supposed to be her best friend, and a secret or two and some stupid misunderstandings have made you freeze her out. Aphrodite looked at me and snorted. Hell, Zoe, with friends like them, it's a good thing we're not enemies. Why is Aphrodite spitting straight facts? Zoe is a victim. She got nonced by Lauren. Predators do try to isolate their victims so people don't find out about the illegal behavior. That's precisely what happened here. Even if the cast duo don't recognize it themselves, that is what they wrote. And Zoe's friends took her being nonced personally baffling. They tell the others that vampires can't read Zoe and Aphrodite's minds. So the idiots finally work out why they need so much secrecy. 
They all bicker, so Zoe pops off. Okay, we'll try to get along, Damien said. For Zoe, Jack said, giving me a sweet smile. For Zoe, the twins said together. What is this Disney crap? I would leave, hit the ejector button and yeet myself away from this book. They all kiss and make up in part ways. Aphrodite turned her cool blue gaze on me. Your friend's a dork, she said. I grinned and butted my shoulder into her. Then that makes you a dork. That's what I'm afraid of, she said. Speaking of me being in hell, come to my room. There's something you have to help me figure out before we go to the council meeting. The twins are symbiotic and I hope very soon someone takes them away to perform science experiments on them. That attitude is not helping, I said. Aphrodite is not having an attitude. She is being funny. There is a difference. The twins have an attitude. Aphrodite, yeah, sometimes she does, but she's being funny here. Speaking of me being in hell, the twins are, sim she's trying to be funny. There is a difference and I'm tired of this book pretending to not understand that. As she rummaged around in it, she said, oh, by the way, you have got to find a way for the council to make it okay for you and tragically me, as much as I had to say it, your nerd her too, to be allowed off campus. Huh? Aphrodite sighed and turned to face me. Would you please keep up with me? We're going to have to be able to come and go so we can figure out what the fuck is going on with Stevie Ray and her nasty friends. Why is Zoe the main character? She is an idiot. She's absent-minded. Aphrodite has to either prompt or directly do things for her. What is the point? Me? Why me? And why do I have to figure out a way for us, all of us to get in and out of the school? Because you are the superhero fledgling. I'm just your more attractive sidekick. Oh, and the herd of nerd are your dorky minions. Great, I said. Hey, don't stress about it. You'll think of something. You always do. When? When has she? Aphrodite wants to find out if she's lost her Earth affinity because Stevie Ray is back to semi-normal. Chapter 8. Zoe invokes a circle. She's all, it's all, it's all that happens in these books. But when she gets to Earth, the candle hurts Aphrodite. It like explodes or something somehow because Aphrodite has lost the affinity. Aphrodite is upset by this because she thinks she's not good enough. And Zoe is all, oh, of course that Nyx loves you despite everything. I feel like this book is gaslighting Aphrodite. She has everything taken away. Her existence and her visions are a misery. But Nyx is still like, of course I love you, duh. How can you not see that I love you? I do this because I, it's gaslighting. Zoe prays, so Nyx comes down to talk to them both. I am 100% sure that 95% of the 82% of statistics are always made up. That 95% of the rest of the vampires don't even see Nyx once in their lives. But here she is stopping in her busy paradise schedule to chat to two students. The goddess smiled at me and I thought my heart would pound out my chest with happiness. Greetings, my Uetsia Gea, she said, using the Cherokee word for daughter, just like my grandma did. Shut up. Daughter, you misunderstand me. I didn't remove your mark. It was the strength of your humanity that burned it away, just as it was the strength of your humanity that stays... Fuck me, I can't talk. Save Stevie Ray. Whether you like it or not, you will always be more sublimely human than anything else, which is part of why I love you so deeply. Gaslight into the extreme. But do not think that you are only a human now, child. You are more than that. So what? Humanity is better than rampanity? Is that what Nyx is trying to tell us? Then why is Nyx a vampire? And not a human god then. If it's so much be if it's so much better to be a human than to be supernatural with all of them powers and stuff. What a load of rubbish. She is doing damage control right now. Aphrodite was just a placeholder for the Earth of 30 before Stevie Ray got healed. That's why she doesn't have it now. So you're not punishing me? Aphrodite said. No, daughter. You punish yourself enough without any addition from me, Nick said gently. She is definitely punishing her. Later on in this book, her visions become so traumatizing they make her bleed from her eyes. She could have, like, she could have the visions without the pain, without the bleeding. Nyx could easily make that a thing, but no. And you don't hate me, Aphrodite whispered. Nyx's smile was radiant and sad. As I have already said, I love you, Aphrodite. I always will, Gaslighter. But if you don't want the war, why don't you just stop it? Neferet has to listen to you. She has to do what you command, I said, not sure why I was suddenly feeling so frantic, especially when the goddess was gazing at me serenely. Instead of answering me, Nyx asked the question of her own. Do you know what is the greatest gift I have ever given my children? Aphrodite's voice sounded strong and clear. Free will. Nick smiled. Exactly, daughter. Once I give a gift, I never take it away. The gift becomes the person, and were I to step in and command obedience, especially in the form of extracting affinities, I would destroy the person. Bollocks. Absolute bollocks. How is it free will when you've created Zoe into being the most powerful fledgling ever, deliberately? She's always puppeteering Zoe, giving her, like, because they're not subtle clues. They are proper, like, gut punches in her stomach of, warning bells were ringing, don't say anything in front of Neferay, like, think of this, say this, say that. Bollocks. 
Nick's vague books a bit and then disappears. Chapter nine. Zoe and Aphrodite bicker and then go off to some meeting. I, d- I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I'd never been in the room before, but I'd peeked inside it often enough. When it was empty, the door was rarely closed. And the zillions of times I'd come and gone from the library, I couldn't help glancing in and gawking at the huge, beautiful round table that was the predominant feature of the room. Gawking. Just imagining Zoe looking stupid with her <laughs> mouth open, fly catching at some table. What an idiot. Neferet comes in, visibly shaken, unnerved by a new woman. Okay, I will admit that I peeked up from the head bow to get a look at the new vamp. She was tall and thin. Her skin was the colour of rich, well-polished dark wood. And like mahogany, it was smooth and flawless, marred only by the intricate tattoo of her sapphire mark. Zoe says zillions. She does not know words like marred. The new vamp is called Shekinah, the high priestess of all vampires, which is why Nefret is so freaked out, which is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nefret is the one getting involved with chaos and evil and declaring war on the humans and bringing fledglings back from the dead. She must have anticipated that a higher up would eventually get wind of all this and want to investigate. So why is she freaking out? Did she not think any of this through? What an idiot. I stiffened at the same time Neferet did, although for a very different reason. Did Shekinna know what I had only begun to suspect, that Neferet was abusing her power and instigating a war between humans and vampires? Zoe and the crew are in awe at Shekinna's powerful presence and she even looks a bit like Nyx herself. Neferet obviously fears her. So why doesn't Nyx just tell Shekinna what's up? I mean, she left heaven for five minutes to chat to Zoe and Aphrodite just to make Aphrodite feel better. You'd think she'd visit the most powerful vamp of all of the vampires and tell her that Neferet is up to no good. Bump her off, would you? (sighs) Shekinah tells Neferet that there will be no war, so knock it off. She tells her that she should ring the human police if she is so sure that the humans did the murders. Shekinah thinks that the humans did the murders. Spoiler alert. They didn't. Why doesn't Nyx just tell her the truth? Shekinah would be more useful than Zoe. Nefret leaves, defeated by some vampire boomer. Chapter 10. I forgot to mention there's a huge Sons of Erebus warrior called Ate. Is that pronounced Ate or Ate as in I ate a burger? I don't know. Why are you asking me? Shekinah is staying until Nefret stops being crazy. And I was lucky enough to catch Eric Knight at the airport. I know it is unusual to have a recently changed vampire teach so soon, but it's only temporary and we are really working under extenuating circumstances. Besides, the fledglings know Eric. He will be a good transition for them from their beloved Professor Nolan. What are the chances of that happening? Forced drama. As for the barrier spell Neferet erected around the school, it will not be resumed. How convenient. Zoe doesn't have to do anything as usual. Zoe tells Shekinah that she wants the Dark Daughters to get involved with a local street cat charity and Darius the warrior offers to help guard them when off campus. Wow, Damien said, looking more than a little starstruck. Shekinah, that was utterly unexpected and she was even more resplendent than I'd imagined. I mean, I wanted to say something, but I was completely flummoxed. Nobody speaks like this and I don't mean the vocabulary, I mean the sentence structure. People in sitcoms filmed in front of live audiences talk like this, not teenagers. You could have told us earlier about the psychic thing, Damien said, as we started out the main building and headed back towards the dorms. Yeah, you're probably right, but I figured the less I said about it, the less you'd think about it and the reasons I wasn't saying anything more to you guys, I said. Makes sense now, Shawnee said. Yeah, we get it now, Erin said. I'm glad you weren't just keeping stuff from us, Jack said. Who even are you, Jack? You've been around for like a day. Sit down, have a glass of water. Anyway, Eric appears. Ugh. My stomach naturally tried to turn itself inside out at this reminder of one of, the main, one of the many reasons I liked Eric so much. He was popular and totally to die for handsome, but he was also truly a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy, TM. Nice guy, you know, like actually nice guy. A nice guy whose immediate standby is to call women sluts and whores when they cross him. Not Zoe cheating on him, but him randomly calling Aphrodite that at the end of the last book, despite us not knowing. We have no known record of Aphrodite cheating. We don't know. We don't know. It's not stated in any of these books so far. He randomly calls her a slut. So yeah, nice guy. Anyway, Jack keeps giggling around Eric, which, hello, your stupid boyfriend Damien is right there. Anyway, Eric leaves, just like everyone always does. 
Chapter 11. The group are discussing Stark. It's odd that a kid with such an amazing talent is unwilling to use it, Damien said. Damien is a thicko, despite what the cast duo tells us. It's fairly obvious there's some trauma there, idiot. Shawnee's cell phone made the little bleeping sound it makes when she gets a text message. That is far too many words to tell me that Shawnee got a text message. James Stark is actually the name of a James Dean character in a film called Rebel Without a Cause. Zoe thinks this says something interesting about his personality, but doesn't explain any further other than just saying... Oh, that's interesting. Whatever. Considering I've never seen the film, it's useless information to me. I felt kind of bruised and not myself inside. Within just a couple of days, I'd imprinted with and lost my virginity to a man slash vamp who hadn't loved me and then he'd been horribly killed. I'd broken my boyfriend's hearts, both of them. A war had almost been started and then ended. Kind of. My best friend wasn't undead anymore, but she wasn't a normal fledgling or vampire either. And even with the kids she was living with. But I couldn't tell most of my friends, as in anyone who wasn't Aphrodite, about the weird red fledglings because it was better if Neferet didn't know that what we knew. And now Eric, one of my two broken hearted ex-boyfriends, was going to be my drama teacher. I know, I've read the other books. Why are you recapping this to me? Damien escorts Zoe to the horse stables. A raven is making noise, which creeps Zoe out. Damien leaves. Zoe hears a thwap fud sound and goes to investigate. It's Stark shooting arrows. With a surprised little gasp, I realised why the arrow in the centre of the target looked so weirdly big. It wasn't just one arrow. It was a bunch of arrows that had hit one right over the top of each other. Every single arrow he'd shot had gone to the same centre spot on the target. Utterly shocked, my eyes went back to Stark, who was still in his archer's stance, and I realised what hot scale he should be on. <sighs> the bad boy hot scale. Pull yourself together, girl. You do not need a fourth boyfriend. Stark looks pale. He's obviously going to die right this second for the drama. They talk and immediately start bickering because Stark wants to pry about Zoe's powers. Stark tells her that his gift is he can't ever miss with his bow and arrow and he accidentally killed his mentor and bestie. Chapter 12. I thought, no matter what, I want to hit the mark and beat Will. I shot the arrow, seeing the bullseye with my eyes, but really imagining beating Will in my mind. Stark dropped his head and he sighed, deep as a storm wind. The arrow flew straight to the target in my mind. It hit Will in his heart and killed him instantly. I felt my head shake back and forth. But how could that happen? Was he by the target? He was nowhere near it. He was standing not more than ten paces from me to my right. We were separated only by the white linen tarp. I don't know why I said, okay, cool story, bro here. I, I don't know why. I think I just got fed up. He met my eyes and I was surprised by the understanding in his. Then he surprised me even more by stepping close to me again and brushing a strand of my hair back from my face. I'm a good listener if you need to talk. Sometimes an outsider's opinion can be a good thing. Would you rather not be an outsider? I asked, trying not to be too thrown off by the nearness of his body and how easy it seemed for him to get close to me and under my skin. Both of you calm down and go to church. Zoe, of course, feels so connected with him already. Sadly, that's good to hear. He then lifted my hand and kissed it, just like that. Just like he kissed girls' hands every day. I didn't know what to say. What's the protocol when a guy kisses your hand? Did one say thanks? I kind of wanted to kiss him back and I was thinking about how I shouldn't be thinking that and staring into his brown eyes when he said, are you going to tell everyone about me? Calm down. Zoe goes to leave but Stark coughs because he is rejecting the change and dying. No, I don't want this to happen now. He paused, coughing up more blood that I kept wiping away. I just found you. I don't want to leave you so soon. Yeah, he has nothing else to live for except some random girl he's just met. Good, he gasped and coughed again, sending fresh rivulets of blood from his nose and mouth. I'm glad it's you. If it has to happen, I'm glad it's you here with me. Nose girl for five minutes. Zoe uses the power of elements to send a message to Damien, like an instant text message of their minds. I looked into his eyes and completely forgot the rest of the world. In that moment, all I knew was that I was holding Stark in my arms and I was going to lose him very, very soon. It's not too late, I told him. I bent and pressed my lips to his. Stark's arms went round me, still strong enough to hold me tight. My tears mixed with his blood and the kiss was absolutely wonderful and terrible and over too soon. I know Zoe feels connected to Stark because he's a special fledgling just like me, so he understands. But his special gift literally killed his friend, whereas Zoe's special gifts just make everyone kiss her ass. These two things are not the same. One bloody hand reached up and touched my cheek. Promise that you won't forget me. Why are they acting like... No idea. Audience fill in the blank. Why are they acting like... And promise you'll take care of Duchess. A dog, but I promise. His voice was suddenly filled with strength. Don't let them send us strangers. At least she knows you and can tell I care about you. Just met 
Zoe tells Stark that fledglings are reborn here and then he dies. Chapter 13. Everyone comes. The twins had their arms wrapped around each other's waist trying hard not to cry. What are those bitches crying about? They only care because he's hot. Duchess dropped her muzzle and looked long and steadily at Jack. I didn't know dogs could cry, but I promise you Duchess was crying. Tears were leaving dark wet streaks from the corner of her eyes down her face and muzzle. If you see your dog crying tears, a call to the vet might be in order. According to Dr. Simon, this can signal a blocked tear duct, allergies, something in that eye, an infection or an injury to the eye. Watch out for signs that your dog is actually sick. Yeah, I don't know about that, Zoe. Take her to the vets. Jack takes the Duchess in. I still don't like him, but fine. Nefret appears. Nefret moved to the gurney and folded the blanket back. Everyone else was looking at Stark, but I couldn't make myself see his dead face, so I didn't take my eyes from Nefret. I was the only one who saw the flash of triumph and pure, undisguisable joy that radiated from her face. She's not trying very hard at being inconspicuous, is she? Nefret clearly wanted Stark at their school to turn him, to him into a red fledgling, yet there was no guarantee he would reject the change. It only happens to a few fledglings. The odds aren't one in two. It's probably more like one in 10 or one in 20, just judging from what we've seen so far. So what would she have done if he hadn't have died? What kind of plan is that? She's an idiot. Aphrodite takes Zoe to her spa bathroom, Vici shower, whatever that is. It seemed ridiculous because I'd only known him for what was really only an instant in time, but I felt Stark's absence like it was a hole in my heart. How could that be? How could I miss him so much when I hadn't really known him? Or maybe I had known him. Maybe there's something that happens between some people at a level that goes beyond time measurements and what society thinks is proper. Maybe what had happened between Stark and me in those few minutes in the field house had been enough for our souls to recognize each other. Hmm, who knows? Here, drink this. Aphrodite handed me a glass of red wine. I shook my head. Thanks, but I don't really like alcohol. American teens are an entirely different species. It's bloody wine, obviously. It'll help you feel better, Aphrodite said. So will this. On the end table behind the chase? Lo, lo, what? She pointed me to was a styrofoam to-go box opened up to show a big greasy goldish cheeseburger and a larger order of fries or a bottle of brown pop fully caffeinated and sugared waiting next to it can't you just say mcdonald's and be done with it what is with all of these u.s centric brands and terms i know it's an american book but don't you want it to like reach international so what is goldies what is a cheese also, Aphrodite is a better friend to Zoe than the twins confirmed. They plan to meet Stevie Ray at the ch charity place. Zoe goes back to her room. I sat heavily on my bed and had just begun to wish Nala would show up when my kitty door opened and my grumpy girl, me uff owled her way across the room, jumped up on my bed and curled up on my chest, pressing her face against my neck and purring like crazy. Have I mentioned in this video yet about Zoe's cat doing a stupid meow? Like... How do, would that even sound in real life other than just sound insufferable? You know, her cat needs to be as special as her. I'm really, really glad to see you. I petted her ears and kissed the white spot over her nose. How's Duchess? She blinked at me, sneezed, and then pressed her head against me and purred some more. Also, why is the cat always sneezing? It's always sneezing. It's always sneezing on Zoe. Does the cat have allergies? Maybe she's allergic to you, which is relatable. Reading this book gives me the hives. Zoe then complains about her boy drama. Crap, I guess no one told my heart it wasn't ready for another guy, I whispered. With all due respect, he just died. Stop griping about your boy drama. That's four guys in as many books, by the way. Are we going for a new guy per book? Will she have a harem by book 12? Can't wait. Girl boss. But I couldn't sleep. My mind kept whirring around and around, focusing on the mistakes I'd made and the people I'd hurt. Had Stark died as some kind of penalty for how badly I'd hurt Eric and Heath? No, my rational mind told me. That's ridiculous. Nix doesn't work like that. But my guilty conscience whispered darker things. You can't hurt people as badly as you hurt Eric and Heath without having a payback. Yeah, a whole ass person with his own life and hopes and dreams died because you were a cheat. What in the self-absorbed is this? World War Me. She thinks about Heath for once, the human who was the collateral damage in her imprint with Lauren. He'd always been there, from the puppy love stuff to the boyfriend girlfriend middle school phase to the going out stage in high school, and finally and more recently, the I've imprinted with him and want to suck his blood and whatnot stage. The whatnot is a nice way of saying that imprinting and drinking a human's blood triggers sex receptors in the fledgling in the human's brain. So I had been thinking of doing more of Heath than just sucking his blood. Yes, I know that sounds skanky, but at least I'm being honest with myself. Imprinting being about sex is an important 
point to note for later in a later book. Heath was nothing if he wasn't dependable. I could depend on the fact that he was crazy about me. I could depend on the fact he'd been my boyfriend, sometimes whether I wanted him to be or not, since third grade. I could depend on the fact that he'd always been there for me. Suddenly I realised that I needed Heath. Leave him alone, you big freak. You've just been drooling over a different guy. She texts him, how are you? Good one. He doesn't text her back. That wouldn't have mattered before. My mind lectured me right back. Before he would have texted me back in about a second and begged me to meet him somewhere, he would have never have slept for a text from me. Yeah, well, that was before you shagged Lauren and imprinted and he had to feel it slash watch some type of psychic vision of the two of them doing it. Leave him alone. He's probably traumatized. No one wants to see their love of their life doing that unless they're a cuck. Tomorrow, I told myself as I started to drift off to restless sleep, if I don't hear from Heath tomorrow, I'll call him. How about leave him alone? Chapter 14. I hadn't needed to set my alarm to go off at five o'clock that evening, which is really my morning. Remember, a fledgling's day and night are mixed up. Our school starts at eight and ends at three. Who are you talking to? Also, I know you said at the beginning of this book. They get ready to go to the street catch charity place thing. Hazy, Shawnee called as Aphrodite and I passed by the kitchen. How are you feeling this morning? Better? Erin asked. I am. Thanks, guys, I said, smiling at them. The twins were beyond resilient. It took more than another brush of death to freak them out for very long. It's hardly resilient. It's more like, why should they care? They spoke to him once and only cared about his looks anyway. Zoe rings Stevie Ray and arranges to meet her later. We don't have what you'd call a principal's office, but we do have an area manned by an attractive young vampire named Miss Taylor. She's actually not a secretary, but an acolyte of Nick's. Damien explained to me that part of her priestess training was to provide service for a house of night. Hence the fact that she could be found busily answering phones, making copies and running errands for the professors when she wasn't setting up the chapel for rituals and whatnot. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a secretary at all. <laughs> Zoe goes to see Shekinah. She smiled at me and I was struck anew at her exotic beauty. Yeah, as if Zoe knows words like a new. I'd like to take Aphrodite with me if that's okay with you. She's the fledgling with the earth element, isn't she? I gave a quick nervous nod and said, Earth is the affinity Nyx gave her. Okay, well, it technically wasn't a lie. Earth is a calming influence. Usually those with an affinity for it are well-grounded and dependable. You made an excellent choice as to who should accompany you today, young princess. Oh my God. She gets her ass kicked. K kissed not kicked i wish it was kicked she gets her ass kissed over literally anything you made a great choice in just picking the one person are you joking me if people kissed my ass as much as they do zoe's like i wouldn't be able to fit through doorways my head would be so big i tried not to look guilty aphrodite grounded and dependable as the twins would say please just please yeah, she's not grounded, but she is the most dependable friend that Zoe has. Do the cast duo realise that other people read these books and can see the inconsistencies? With my approval, Neferet has transferred you from an entry level of vampire sociology to sick former level of the class. She looked pointedly at my unusual mark, already filled in even though I'm still definitely a fledgling. And of course... <sighs> No vamp or fledgling has ever had the expanded tattoo marking I have down my neck, shoulders, <laughs> my neck, my crack, my pussy and my crack, and waist. She couldn't see those, but her knowing gaze said that she knew. We know, you tell us 3,000 times per page. Zoe is told she has to cast another circle at the east wall to cleanse the school. And proms tomorrow. Chapter 15. Aphrodite, Darius and Zoe drive off to the charity. I have never known so many powerfully gifted fledglings, Darius said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoe is freaking out that Aphrodite doesn't have her earth element anymore. That because she doesn't, the circle won't work and the gang will be mad at her for keeping another secret. Oh, shut up. I pulled around in my purse looking for the Advil and couldn't find it. Of course, drugs don't work on fledglings very well anyway. Let's test that theory out. Quick, someone give her some crack. What it looked like I was going to get was typical for me. More trouble and stress and probably a nice dose of raging diarrhea. Thank you, cast duo. Very cool. They get the street cats. It's run by nuns, which I totally forgot about. The Benedictine sisters, to be precise. I don't know what that is. I think it's something to do with Benedict Cumberbatch, I believe. Could be wrong. Why, well, yes, we've been running street cats for the past two years. Cats are very spiritual creatures, don't you think? Aphrodite snorted. Spiritual? They've been killed for being witches familiars and in league with the devil. If a black one walks across their path, people think it's bad luck. Do you, is that what you mean by spiritual? Mm, yeah, that does sound spiritual. Supernatural. I wanted to smack her for how disrespectful she sounded, but the nun wasn't ruffled at all. 
Don't you think that it's because cats have always been so closely associated with women, especially those considered wiser women by the general public? So naturally, in a predominantly male-dominated society, a certain type of people would see sinister things in them. No, no, absolutely not. A book that routinely calls women sluts, whores and skanks does not get to get on a feminist high horse. No, not allowed. Illegal. Sister Mary Angela, that's the nun, is like, oh, you're Aphrodite the vampire. Because she recognises, like, Aphrodite's dad is the mayor. So Zoe tells them they're all vampires and the nuns are cool with it. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but don't you think that all vampires are doomed to hell because we worship a goddess? I asked. Child, what I believe is that your Nyx is just another incarnation of our blessed mother Mary. I also believe devoutly in Matthew 7, 1, which says, Judge not that ye be not judged. Oh man, someone should bust this nun's bubble and tell her that Nyx definitely exists and is definitely a vampire god. No signs of Mary, Jesus or yashua though you know seeing as some gods are sniffy about got uh, people worshiping false idols why doesn't nix just say hi to the entire world and stop humans from killing vampires she has the time to talk to zoe whenever she fancies it you'd think preventing murder would be higher on the list not the two murders that happen but historically the murders canonically of humans done by vampires no nope. Or vampires done by humans. Anyway, Aphrodite has never had a cat. Don't worry, like everything in this book, this will be rectified by the end of the day. Still, I have to admit that I thought it was cool that Sister Mary Angela, a woman who was supposed to be married to God, was so accepting of us. It made me wonder about if I had really been, to use some of the nun's words, incorrectly painting all religious folks, except for Nix's religious folks, with the same brush. She was just playing my God is better than your God, which is most what most people do because everyone is so tribal and basic and boring. I'm going to become religious, but only... I'm agnostic, thanks. But only follow the religion of ancient Egypt. And my gods will be better than your gods because my gods have animals for heads, so suck it. Stevie Ray appears. I'd love to feed her to a crocodile. No, she doesn't have very good fashion sense. And no, I was not going to let what was Aphrodite being her usual bitchy self make me doubt my BFF. Yeah, it sounds real smart. You do that, babe. Also, you're being bitchy. Black Aphrodite and her flirting is so nasty. She's not even in the room with them right now. She lives rent-free in their heads. Chapter 16. I sighed. We were only allowed to leave campus with an escort from the Sons of Erebus, so this warrior named Darius, he must be hot if Aphrodite is making such a fuss over him. Yeah, he's definitely hot. Anyway, Darius said he'd escort me and Aphrodite. She said she'd keep him busy so that we could talk. Bet that's a real hardship for her, Stevie Ray said sarcastically. Please, we all know she's kind of skanky, I said. Wow, such a win for feminism. Stevie Ray tells Zoe about what it was like to become a red fledgling. She took me to the tunnels and the rest of the kids. She used to visit us a lot. She'd Sometimes she'd even bring street people for us to eat. Stevie Ray looked away, but not before I saw the pain and guilt that filled her eyes. She was such a sweet soul, such a good girl. <laughs> was she? Was she such a good girl? Stop it. Remembering how it was when she'd been losing her humanity must have been awful for her. Well, I'm sure it was worse for all of the homeless people who died. They discuss the upcoming cleansing ritual. Yep, the green candle zaps her and flies out of her hand. She's not just minus earth, she's minus earth squared. That is a problem, Steve Ray agreed. Yep, a problem I'm sure Nefre will somehow twist into having happen because there's something wrong with me. A, not everything is about you. And two, so what if she does? It's just a few words, no big deal. You don't even like Neferet anyway. Zoe thinks maybe we should just show everyone that Stevie Ray exists and she gets a prompt from Nyx telling her that she's right. Stevie Ray disagrees. I looked at her for a long time considering what I knew, that Stevie Ray had been given back her humanity and what I half suspected but didn't want to admit, that even though she had her humanity back, I'm not even saying words anymore, just saying vows, <laughs> She still had dark places within her that I couldn't understand. Well, she has killed a lot of homeless people, but according to the casts, they aren't real people anyway, so who cares? It's not my words. Stevie Ray gets a call from Venus and Zoe is concerned that the red fledglings are eating people. Chapter 17. But first, a message from this video's sponsor. Are you worried about your data online? Do you need to protect it from the hacker known as 4chan? Then download ExpressVPN today. ExpressVPN was founded in 2009 and is one of the world's largest premium VPN services. It's trusted by millions of users around the world. It has the best in class military grade encryption that keeps your internet traffic protected from hackers and snoops. It has a built in kill switch known as a network lock to keep your data protected if your VPN connection drops. The threat manager gives you more control over your online privacy and how your data is being used. ExpressVPN has thousands of ultra secure servers across 94 countries. They also have a strict privacy policy. No activity 
or connection logs. It's easy to use and you can connect five different devices with one subscription. And they have a one month, six month and 12 month plan with the 12 month plan being the best bargain for your money. So make sure you use my special link in the description box, expressvpn.com forward slash Aleasy and you will get free extra months free when you purchase a 12 month plan using my special link. Thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. Chapter 17, the fledglings are stealing pizzas and blood from blood banks, which sounds like a balanced diet. Michelle Obama said pizza is a vegetable. Michelle Obama says pizza is a vegetable. Michelle Obama says pizza is a vegetable. Michelle Obama says pizza is a vegetable. Stevie Ray leaves, so Zoe goes to find Aphrodite. Aphrodite and Darius were sitting over in the playground for Cat's Corner, snuggling together like lovers with their backs turned to me. They were doing something, ugh, with their hands. Actually, it looked like they were doing a lot of something with their hands. Double -er. I cleared my throat dramatically. Instead of jumping apart guiltily as they should have, Darius glanced over his shoulder at me and grinned. Aphrodite, the hoe, didn't even turn to look at to see who had just walked in on them. Jeesh, I could have been a nun or someone's mum. What, did she really think that these two were just doing foreplay in the middle of a charity shop ran by nuns? The bigotry of low expectations. Like, Zoe really thought that Aphrodite was just like wanking off Darius or something. Aphrodite has a cat. It's an ugly cat, I continued. Mate, your cat sounds like an idiot and is always sneezing. Glass houses much. Aphrodite calls her cat Maleficent, which that's who I cosplay as every time I draw on these eyebrows. Is she declawed? I asked. Nope, Aphrodite said happily. She could put an eye out with those big paws of hers. Declawing? is animal abuse, that's my PSA. But it's nice to see that Zoe is pro abuse and animal mutilation. Can this main character do anything right? I bet she's pro cropping diamond ears too. Abuse, all abuse. Sister Bianca and Sister Fatima said it was nothing short of a miracle how Maleficent took to Aphrodite immediately. Aphrodite's smile was 100% authentic and it made her look young and heartbreakingly gorgeous. She was waiting for me, she said. Finally, Aphrodite catches one single break. Uh, Aphrodite, shouldn't you put her in a cat carrier or something? Oh my God, are you mean and hateful or what? Of course she doesn't ride in a cat carrier. Aphrodite stroked the beast, causing white fur to float all around us like a disgusting cat hair shower. Don't all cats shed. Why is Zoe being so stuck up and a cat hater as soon as Aphrodite finds a cat that she likes? Zoe is so fickle and shallow and is also like gatekeeping cats. I don't know. They go to a fast food chicken shop. This is doing nothing to help my hunger. Chapter 18. He's way too good for you. I told Aphrodite. Supportive women who support women for as late as it was charlie's was very busy and sheep-like we jostled around with the rest of the herd animals finally getting in line behind an obese woman who had really bad teeth and a bolding guy who smelled like feet <laughs> what did they do to you aphrodite snorted you think I don't know I'm awful to my boyfriends? Please. I'm selfish, not stupid. Darius will probably get sick of my crap in a few months. I'll dump him right before he dumps me, but at least it'll be a fun ride until then. We've never been given a real example of how she's awful to her boyfriends, so okay, cast duo, sure, whatever. Aphrodite is happy that Maleficent chose her. Yeah, Nefertiti, she chose him. So what's the big deal? Happens all the time. Cats choose their fledglings or sometimes their vamps. Most every vamp eventually gets one and I suddenly realised why the cat choosing her had made such an impact on Aphrodite. Zoe is so obtuse. It should be immediately recognisable that this means Aphrodite still is a type of vampire, but she's too busy thinking about herself. Hey, a little grease is good for your hair and nails. Kind of like vitamin E. I bumped her shoulder. I'll even order for you. Could I have something diet? Please, there's nothing diet about Charlie's. They have diet pop, she said. I sneered down her size six perfectness. Not for you. Zoe is a feeder confirmed. They discuss Stark and feeding him when he returns. Ugh, I know you've gotten all into the blood sucking back and forth, but it still squeezed me out. It squeezed me out too, but there's no denying the power of it, I admitted uncomfortably. She gave me a long contemplative look. The sociology book says it's a lot like sex, maybe even better. I shrugged. You're going to have to do better than that. I want details. I thought Aphrodite had drunk blood directly from a person, like from Eric in that basically assault scene in the first book. Did the cast duo forget their own canon? Why does no one care about this book series more than me? Aphrodite suggests getting a nanny cam and setting it up to in the morgue so Zoe can monitor it. Seriously. Does Zoe think of anything for herself? She would be dead without Aphrodite. They're discussing Nefret being evil when Zoe hears a familiar laugh. Everyone in these books can't go one day without running into each other. It's so improbable. It's literally made in Chelsea, which is fake AF. So 
He was carrying a tray filled with his favourite combo meal, the number three with extra large fries, along with a tiny kid's meal. You know, one of those meals that girls get when they get on a date, so they look like they don't eat much, and then they go home and snarf down the refrigerator when they're alone. The girl with him wasn't carrying anything, but she was sticking her hand into his front pocket. Front pocket. You fucked someone else, shut up. Playfully trying to crab a wad of, bu- a wad of bills into it. But he is majorly ticklish, which is why, even though he was unnaturally pale and had a bruised looking dark circles under his eyes, he was laughing like a total moron while she smiled up at him with a flirty little grin. It's Heath, and Zoe has zero leg to stand on about a girl flirting with him when she fucked another dude. And the girl wasn't even flirting with him, by the way, they're just mates. So, paranoid much? Heath comes over to say hello and asks about their broken imprint. This time he didn't look away, didn't make any attempt to hide the pain in his eyes or voice. There's someone else, someone besides the guy you already told me about. Zoe, three guys, red bird. I'm sorry, Heath, I had never meant to hurt you. I just, no, he raised his hand like he could hold off my words. Didn't mean to hurt me as bullshit. I've loved you since I was in grade school. You being with someone else hurts me. No way it can't. You're with someone else tonight. Aphrodite's cool words seem to cut the air between the three of us. Zoe shagged another guy. Heath can do what he likes. Chill out. Heath's eyes flashed when he rounded on her. I let a friend talk me into leaving the house for the first time in days. A friend, he repeated. Then he turned back to me. I noticed again how pale and sick he looked. It's Casey Young. Remember her? She used to be your friend too. Heath had always treated her like a little sister. She'd liked him, but I'd never felt the I want to steal your boyfriend vibe want her. I want to see, I've never seen anyone write like that before. I want to steal your boyfriend vibe from her like I'd felt too many times from my supposed BFF Kayla. Casey saw me looking at her and hesitantly she raised her hand and waved at me. Sadly, I managed a little wave back. Zoe is so insecure that she imagined the girl was being flirty. (laughs) Pain? Talk about an understate Zoe. I thought you were dead at first. And when I thought that, I wished I was dead too. I think a part of me did die then, but he wasn't dumb. But I knew you weren't dead because I could feel some of what was happening to you. (laughs) he grimaced some of what he was making you feel then i didn't know anything except my soul as a whole in the place where you had been i still feel like there's a part of me missing a big part of me it hurts all the time every day he closed his eyes against the pain and shook his head you didn't even call me he had to feel lauren smashing zoe's back doors in he had to feel it he had a ghost vagina for a second he says He loves Zoe forever, but he doesn't want to see her ever again because she hurt him too much. Heath walked slowly back to Casey. When he got to her table, she said something too soft for me to hear. He nodded, and then without one glance back at me, Casey wound her arm through his, and the two of them left their food, sitting uneaten on the table. And Heath, those chickens died for nothing. And Heath walked out of my life. I bet this doesn't last for more than one book. Chapter 19. They go back to the car. So you're going to be all right? Darius repeated, this time talking to me. If she says no, will you go back and kill that stupid boy? Aphrodite asked. A little bubble of laughter escaped from my surprise mouth i don't want him killed and i'm going to be okay aphrodite shrugged suit yourself but i think the boy needs killing everyone who is friends with zoe is contractually obligated to babying her when the consequences of her own actions confront her this is why she never grows up he did nothing wrong he doesn't deserve any ire that's it So after that nasty confrontation with Heath, I'm definitely finished with boyfriend issues for a good long time. Bet this doesn't even last one chapter. Spoiler alert, I know it doesn't. Zoe has drama class with Eric teaching. Very blonde, very cute, and very tall Cole Clifton, who is currently dating Shorty, which also meant he was very brave, whispered a perky greeting to me, breaking through my inner babble. Hi, I said back, giving him a big smile. Oh, hey, this is excellent. Thank you for volunteering, Zoe. Huh? I blinked up at Eric. His smile was cool. His eyes were his eyes were blue ice. You were talking, so I assumed that meant you were volunteering to read opposite me in a Shakespeare improvisation. It's his first day and he's already being very unprofessional. They are doing Othello, a scene between Othello and Desdemona. Whoever the hell that is. If if who's if Eric becomes the actor. But if, oh, I understand what they mean because I've seen actors do this. But the way the cast would describe it, it just makes me feel like, oh, you're so pretentious. Stop it. He starts performing. Then, utterly shocking me, Eric bent and kissed me on the lips. His kiss was rough and tender, passionate with anger and betrayal. Yet it seemed he didn't want to take his lips from mine. He made me breathless. He made me nauseated. He made my head spin. I sue. Want to be his girlfriend again? I told you it wouldn't last a chapter. Also, this is highly inappropriate considering that he is now a teacher and is using his professor powers to single out a student and manipulate them and uh, be sexual with them. Why are all teachers in this book series gross? Think hard, he ground between clenched jaws. If there's anything you're sorry for, you need to ask for forgiveness for it now. Nothing will be the same for you again. Not after what happens tonight. His fingers were digging into my shoulders so hard that I knew they were going to leave bruises. 
Excuse me, Eric, but what the fuck? Can you not assault your students? The truth, he stormed, his eyes looking wild. I want you to admit just how much you betrayed me. But I didn't. I could feel tears sting in my eyes. Not in my heart. I never betrayed you in my heart. You, um, you kind of did. Then your heart is a black shriveled thing because you absolutely did betray me. They really shouldn't be doing this in front of a class full of students. Then all of a sudden, the sadness and hope flattened from his expression. No, you acted like a slut, so now you can get a slut's reward. How could I call the police on this book? He stepped close, taking one hand from my throat so that he could use the arm to hold me locked against him. His other hand was big enough that it reached almost all the way around my neck. As he squeezed, our bodies were pressed together and I felt a wild rush of white hot desire for him. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was weird, but my heart was pounding with more than fear or nerves. I stared into his eyes, feeling Desdemona's terror along with my own passion, and I knew... (laughs) by the hardness in his body that he was feeling the same things he got a boner they kiss and the bell rings how late was she to this class because she was late to the class right but this whole exchange couldn't have been longer than five minutes so was it like a 10 minute lesson or okay chapter 20 everyone claps because of course they do they leave and eric slams the door on zoe i bit my lip hard to keep from bursting into tears as i bolted from the drama room face burning with humiliation what the hell had just happened well i knew one thing for sure even if it was only one thing and that was that eric knight was still interested in me sure the interest might be focused on mainly wanting to strangle me but still he literally walked in on her doing it cowgirl style with lauren but of course he's still interested in her of course She's that hot and that special. Zoe starts yelling at some trees, but Darius appears to take her to Aphrodite, who is having a vision. And then Darius becomes Sonic the Hedgehog. I opened my mouth to repeat my okay and maybe roll my eyes at him when all the breath was pushed from my lungs as Darius exploded forward, taking somehow taking me with him. It was the most bizarre thing I'd ever experienced, which was saying something, because I'd had a ton of bizarre experiences in the past couple of months, but this was like being on one of those moving sidewalks at the airport. I mean, the sidewalk was Darius's aura or something, and the moving was happening so fast that the world around us was one big blur. Would this not break the sound barrier? Zoe goes to Aphrodite. Oh my God, what happened? I hurried over to her, turning on the Tiffany light that was on her bedside table. When Maleficent stirred and hissed a warning at me, I told the beast, try it and I will throw you out the window and call down rain to soak the crap out of you. Peter is going to be fuming about this. The cat growled again, but subsided back into a white ball. I turned my attention to Aphrodite. Her eyes were completely bloodshot. It was so bad that the whites of them were totally red. Not pink and inflamed like she was allergic to pollen, she just walked through a field of it. They were red, as in blood, as in blood filling her eyes and straining them scarlet. She is bleeding from her eyes. Nyx loves her my ass. Aphrodite copied down a poem during her vision for Zoe to read. I refused, I refused to write it down. I refused to screenshot it. I refused to read it out loud. It's about a bloke called Colonna, not Clona, the little, you know, cat man. Colonna and the queen C. Skilly, C. Gilly, C. C. Skilly. The handwriting of the poem is the same as Zoe's grandmother, chapter 21. But that's impossible. I wrote the damn thing just a few minutes ago. Look, I practically transported Hero Darius and that should have been impossible, but I definitely did it. Yes, dork, seeing as there's no such thing as Star Trek. You recognize the transporter reference. You're a dork too, I said smugly. How is transported a unique reference to Star Trek? I feel like it's quite a common word. Aphrodite's vision was just of Zoe's grandma holding the poem, no death and destruction. Why did her eyes bleed just for that? I'd be fuming with Nyx if I was her. Zoe rings her grandma. No, you wet Gaia, I was not asleep. I woke hours ago from a dream of you and I've been awake and praying ever since. Her familiar use of the Cherokee word for daughter made me feel loved and safe. By the end of this series, I'm going to be fluent in at least five Cherokee words. I couldn't help smiling. She sounded worried and upset when she thought something might be wrong with me. But when it was just herself that she might be in danger, she sounded all tough and ready to take on the world. I really heart my grandma. I really hate all of you. Zoe recites the poem and grandma gets freaked out. Kelowna is a demon. Chapter 22. Grandma makes Zoe do a cleansing smudge before speaking further. Waft it around you. Girls, both of you need to concentrate on protection and positive spirits. Think of your goddess and how much she loves you. I'm pretty sure that Nyx hates Aphrodite, but everyone is gaslighting her into believing otherwise. C. Sigilli are evil Cherokee witches, powerful psychics who can kill with their minds. It's obviously about Neferet. Kelowna is a fallen angel. In a way, in ancient times, angels walked the earth and mated with humans. Many people have stories to describe this time. The Bible called them Nephilim. The Greeks and Romans called them Olympian gods. I call them by their true name, reptilians. The song I remember my grandma singing, 
tells that Colonna changed when he began to lie with the maidens of the tribe. The story goes that after the first time he bedded a maiden, he became obsessed. He had to have women. He craved them constantly, but he also hated them for causing the lust and need he felt for them. Colonna's going to fall in love with Zoe, isn't he? And all the while, his hatred for women grew with an intensity that was all the more frightening because of his obsession with them. Colonna is an incel, confirmed. Colonna assaults the tribe women, and some of them give birth to raven mockers who have bird body and heads. Bird bodies and heads but human limbs, which in my head always looked just like a big bit daft. I did a Google search and typically raven mockers just look like old people. So this might be the cast duo reimagining the, but it looks a bit silly in my head. The wise women get rid of Kelowna by, they use the magic of women to create a maiden so beautiful she would be impossible for Kelowna to resist. Guess who Zoe is kind of reincarnated from? <laughs> They create a beautiful and powerful maiden out of clay and give her life via magic and they call her Aya. Kelowna sees Aya and she runs away from him into a cave. Kelowna caught Aya deep within the bowels of the earth. Instead of screaming and struggling against him, this most beautiful of maidens welcomed him with smooth arms and inviting body. But the instant he penetrated her, that soft inviting body changed back into what it had been once, earth and the spirit of woman. I'm not sure how a clay woman with pieces of several different women that maiden created by somehow gets a soul and becomes partly reincarnated in Zoe Redbird, but who cares? Anyway, they trap Colonna inside the earth forever. Well, Colonna's entombment wasn't the end of the story. At the moment his tomb was sealed, each of his children, the terrible raven mockers, began to sing a song in a human's voice that promised Colonna would one day return and describe the horrible vengeance he would take against human beings, especially women. Oh no, a powerful bloke wants to take out his anger on women. Never heard that before. Grandma thinks the poem is a warning that Kelowna is about to return. Chapter 23. I need to take a moment for how batshit the book series becomes. Because at first you think the big bad guy is Neferet, but then it's actually Kelowna. But then, spoiler alert, it's not even him. It's some big white cosmic bull. You know, a bull as in a male cow. I wish I was joking. They agree that Nyx wants Grandma to help out somehow. You should come here, Aphrodite said suddenly. I looked at her in surprise and she nodded her head slowly, deadly serious. I listened to my gut instinct and knew of a sickening thud in my heart that Aphrodite was right. Gut instinct, more like Nick's instinct. Also, Aphrodite suggests everything yet again. Grandma agrees to come around immediately for a sleepover. Don't you think you should get going? You have a lot to do. Huh? I said. She sighed. You have to round up the nerd herd, brief them on the perm and whatnot, and figure out where your grandma's staying, which means you'll probably have to okay something with a shikinna, since I'll bet you don't want to have a cosy one-on-one with Neferet, and there's still the nanny cam you have to get Jack to set up in the morgue. Good luck with all of that. Zoe is useless without Aphrodite's hand-holding. Zoe talks to her friends. Holy crap, would you guys stop bickering? We've got some major life stuff going on that makes my pathetic love life stuff seem even more ridiculous than it already is. Now I'm going to get myself a brown pop and try like hell to find some real chips in the kitchen. And while I do that, get your butt upstairs and meet me in Aphrodite's room. We have stuff we have to figure out. Stuff, Damien said. What kind of stuff? The same old stuff of the scary, life-shattering, world-ending variety we're so familiar with, I said. Why is this so Disney? slash Marvel. Oh my God, I feel faint. Jack fanned himself. Why is he such a caricature? He has no personality other than being a stereotype. Oh Z, Jack cried, petting Duchess's ears frantically. Just thinking about those disgusting raven things croaking at your seat grandma, sitting there in her little house on that lavender lavender farm, way out in the boondocks, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Nice, Aphrodite said, as if Zoe isn't freaking out enough without you free, feeling the need to twist the knife in her gut. Oh, jeesh. I'm so sorry, Zoe. Jack was instantly contrite, clutching Damien with one hand and petting Duchess with the other. He looked like he was going to cry. Grow the hell up. How is the fate of the world going to rest on a baby like this? Thank God he's not long for this world. Let me see the poem. Typical for Mr. Studious, he went right to the point, bypassing a good portion of the drama. Feeling utterly relieved to have another brain trying to figure it out, I stood up and handed him the poem. Firstly, you know, calling it a poem really is a misnomer, Damien said. Shut up, you absolute Reddit mod. Actually, it's a prophecy, he said. Well, shit, he's right, Aphrodite said. Sadly, I have to agree, Shorty said. Gloom and doom to come put in confusing what the fuck language. Yep, definitely a prophecy, Aaron said. Prophecy, like in Lords of the Rings about the return of the king, Jack said. Damien smiled at him. Yes, just like that. (laughs) They all looked my way. It was right to me, I said lamely. Why do they each individually need to have like some sort of quip? It's so Disney Channel. Oh, they're going on about poetry and stanzas now. Someone call Rachel Oates. Thank you, Rachel, for what's the word edited in this video. Poetic stanzas are roughly synonymous to paragraphs in prose, each one being self-contained with its own subject, even though it has to fit together as a whole. 
That's my boy, Jack said, grinning and hugging Duchess. Damn, the kid is smart, Shawnee said. Seriously, a brainiac, Erin said. Just watching him gives me a headache. Aphrodite said, so unnatural. Neferet, Damien whispered. Okay, we know that she's not what she appears to be, Erin said. But does that mean she's as evil as it sounds like a Sigili has to be? Shawnee said. Aphrodite and I exchanged a look. I made the decision and nodded. She's chosen a different path from Nyx, Aphrodite said. The twins gasped. Jack hugged Duchess and I swear he made a little doggy whining sound. You know that for sure? Damien said, his voice sounding shaky. Maybe I'm biased because we read this from Zoe's perspective, but duh obviously neferet is so obviously unhinged and she doesn't hide it well these kids are stupid how are they going to save the world they have the combined iq of this bit of water they work out that colonna is either communicating with or influencing neferet chapter 24 they work out that stevie ray will be involved somehow and she has a red tattoo just like in the story about the hot chick the the uh, jigua women made for colonna erin said that's definitely a connection shawnee said Stevie Ray, oh my god, Stevie Ray, Jack said, looking even paler than I did. Thank you for less than nothing, Jack. Zoe let slip about the other red fledglings because she has the IQ of a raisin. Weirdly enough, it was sweet Jack who saved me. You mean this is more stuff you couldn't tell us because you didn't want us accidentally thinking about and having Neferet, who really isn't one of the good guys, listening into our minds and finding out that you knew? It's taken two books, but he's finally been useful. Oh, he he's, Jack giggled. I take it back. Zoe tells them everything. They all apologise to Aphrodite and recognise she was the only one being a good friend to Zoe. The goodwill absolutely will not last another chapter. Aphrodite tells them of the nanny cam for Stark. Oh cool, Jack said. I saw that on Dr. Phil the other day. God, it was just awful. Some horrid and may I say fat poorly dressed nanny was caught by one of them shaking the crap out of some poor little kid. What? On red fledglings. They are, Aphrodite said. They're like, she paused and then her eyes lit up. They're like blue collar workers, each. Aphrodite's classism is the only thing preventing her from being the only decent character in the book. Even with the classism, she's still better than everyone else by far. At least she's honest in her prejudice, unlike Zoe, the fake SJW. Well, whether they're really gross or just being class stereotyped by Gossip Girl, I think we need to keep an eye on them, Damien said. We need to know what they're doing, who they're talking to, what they're thinking. If we know all of that, we'll also know if this demon guy is trying to contact one of them and use him for his nefarious means. Neff what? Shawnee said. Arius who? Erin said. How have they never heard that word? Aphrodite admits she's not really a fledgling anymore. Okay, that's majorly freaky, Jack said. It's totally queer, Shawnee said. And she doesn't mean that in the gay sense, Erin input. Thanks for clearing that up. I have a migraine. Things are changing, Damien said. The world order is shifting into something new. So you could say it's a new world order. Damien says that they should avoid Neferet, but Aphrodite counters that then Neferet will know something's up. So they should actively seek her out to ask her about banal things and only think about silly teenager stuff when around her. Aphrodite is smarter than Damien, who is the supposed genius of the series. They all go off to do their missions, chapter 25. Gaslights made pretty shadows against the winter trees and hedges, and there was a soft wind blowing the scent of cinnamon and earth from the fallen leaves that carpeted the grounds yeah this is exactly how zoe sounds i suppose this is the pitfalls of co-authoring if you aren't very good in the first place consistency in how a character sounds isn't going to be there several of them called hellos to me and many of them saluted me respectfully her peers randomly salute her. All right, Kim Jong-un. The raven mockers all caught at Zoe. You know, real ravens are really smart. You can teach them to steal stuff for you. They can hold grudges, recognize people and throw things at people they have grudges against. I wish these raven mockers chucked a boulder at Zoe. That simple sound was indescribably terrifying. I understood why they were called mockers of ravens because even though you could easily mistake them for regular birds, if you listened just a little more carefully, you heard in their suspiciously mundane call cool, the echo of death and fear and madness. Nala hissed long and menacingly, staring back over my shoulder at the darkness surrounding the huge old oaks that were usually so familiar and welcoming. Not tonight. Tonight they house monsters. A scent that was deadly, sickingly sweet. I tasted the bile of fear in the back of my throat. I think the mum wrote this chapter because the writing seems more sophisticated than the usual Oh my god, zillions ginormous. I almost peed my pants, he was so hot. Rubbish. A raven mocker grabs Zoe and licks her neck. Everyone fancies her, even spirit bird people. Anyway, the power of wind and friendship knocks the raven mocker away so Zoe narrowly avoids death to our collective dismay. But this time, the wind that smoothed against my skin wasn't frigid and rank with death. It was familiar and filled the, with the strength of Damien's friendship. I am not 
kidding. This whole book series is the power of friendship and um random elements. I quickly oriented myself facing the direction I knew was east. Then I raised both my arms above my head, closed my eyes and blocked out the evil mockery of twisted bird calls. Wind, blow hard, blow strong, blow... <laughs> Blow off and show these creatures what it is to attack someone who is beloved of a goddess. That is a lot of cringy words in a life or death situation. In a Final Fantasy game, you'd just say Aero, Aroga, and get the same effect. Like you, you're not gonna have the time to reel off this like flame, burn bright, burn true. Like show these raven mockers what it's like to feel the heat of someone who is loved by God. You ain't got the time. They're gonna like bash your head in after you've said the first like three words. Zoe blows all of the raven mockers away. Was I still scared? Hell yes. But am I tough enough? H tough enough? Hell yes, I'm tough enough. Zoe hides herself and overhears Neferet talking mad shit as always. The recent murders prove we need more of a presence here and all over the world, Neferet snapped. They're in all of the films, so that's a pretty big presence. I heard her draw a deep breath as if she was working hard to control herself. She's always snapping and being moody these days, so why is it such a surprise to Zoe's gang that Neferet is so unhinged? They don't pay attention. Neferet tells Shekinah that she thinks Zoe is the source of all evil. Zoe? But she is the most gifted fledgling in history. Not only has no other fledgling ever wielded the power of the five elements, but no other fledgling has ever been surrounded by so many gifted peers. We know. My god. My gods. My Osiris. My Anubis. We know. Neferet starts pinning the human murders on Zoe, saying that she was shagging them too. Which... Mm, I mean, we know it's bull. It's not the realm possibility, is it? She then blames Zoe for the vampire murders. As if a fledgling, no matter how gifted, could kill a psychic vampire without the other... Sure. Shekinah doesn't believe Neferet because she's not five or as dumb as Zoe's friends. Aphrodite and Damien cause a commotion outside with the dog and the cats to distract Neferet whilst Jack goes to the morgue to fit a nanny cam to watch in case Stark's body reanimates. That is a brand new sentence. Chapter 26. Zoe speaks to Shekinah. I hesitated, choosing my words very carefully. I wanted to tell Shekinah as much of the truth as I dared, and for an instance I couldn't uh, telling her everything. The whole truth about Stevie Ray and the prophecy and what we were afraid of was happening. But my gut told me not to reveal any everything now. Shekinah would learn the truth. Why not? She's high priestess of the whole vampire world. Does Nyx not trust... It's not a word. Does Nyx not trust her most loyal subject? Zoe gets permission for her grandma to stay. Zoe then leaves and bumps into Eric. Of course she does. You liked kissing me today. You liked it a lot. His smile was mocking and very well rehearsed. Yeah, so? I never said I didn't like kissing you. The problem is too many guys have liked kissing you. I felt my face go hot. Don't you dare talk to me like that. Why not? It's true. You were kissing your human boyfriend, you were kissing me, and you were kissing Blake, as far as I'm concerned. That's a lot of guys. It's funny because it's true. Zoe explodes and tells Eric she was being used and nonce, but no one cares about that part. You hurt me, he said softly, all the anger and jerkness going out of his voice. I know and I'm sorry, but I guess we didn't have much together in the first place if we can't learn to forgive each other for this mess. I mean, if your girlfriend fucks another dude and you don't forgive them, it doesn't mean you don't love them. It just means you love yourself and your boundaries more. So get bent with that like guilt tripping behavior. They agree they miss each other. Why? Why is she doing this when she already has the hots for Stark's cold rigor mortising body? Zoe goes to get her grandma who just arrived. Chapter 27. Almost done, almost done. They get to the dorm. So I'm guessing all the rest of you are up to date about the things Zoe's getting ready to tell me. Grandma asked the group in general and Jack returned. They all nodded, looking round-eyed and baby bird-like. What does that even mean? Zoe tells her everything. Uh-oh. <laughs> we totally forgot about that. Like we need detention crap to worry about right now on top of everything else, Jack said, then looked chagrined. Chagrin follows me around like a jilted ex. They all go to their rooms, but Grandma gives Aphrodite a dream catcher because fuck the rest of Zoe's friends. I'm not complaining. I agree. Fuck them. She also gives Aphrodite a protective, protective candle thing. It's always wise to be cautious, you at Siagea. She took Aphrodite's face between her hands and kissed her lightly on her forehead. Sleep well, little daughter, and may your dreams be happy ones. This is the nicest anyone's been to Aphrodite in all four books. Grandma didn't say anything for a little while. She just gazed thoughtfully at the closed door. Finally, she said, I don't believe that girl has ever known the warmth of a mother's love. I give it one book before the grandma starts calling Aphrodite a slag too. Zoe goes to hang up her own dream catcher outside the window and there's a mocking, nope, 
Wrong book. There's a raven mocker there. Chill him. I reached up with both hands to pull apart the thick drapes. They opened and I felt a stab of raw fear as I looked directly into the hideous face of a gigantic black bird with terrible glowing red eyes shaped like a man's. The creature was clinging to the outside of my window with arms and legs that were human. Its dangerously hooked black beak opened, showing a forked red tongue. The thing let out a soft crap <laughs> that sounded mocking and threatening at the same time. Maybe it wanted to join in with the sleepover. It's been knocking about doing F all for a thousand years. Maybe it wanted to kick back, relax, have a bit of gossip, watch telly. You don't know that it doesn't. Zoe calls wind that somehow grandma uses. So it's like that, is it? Just because she's Native American, she can wield magic? Is that what you're telling me, cast duo? You know that. Grandma cried. Carry this with my warning to the beast. I watched Grandma lift her hands and blow what was cupped in her palm straight at the creature that crouched on the other side of the window. Ahia. <laughs> ah. Askina. <laughs> wow, I'm really sorry, actually. That was, that was probably offensive. She cried. Anyway, she blows dust at the raven mocker so it flies away. Chapter 28. Zoe casually sends the wind whipping around campus to get rid of any raven knockers hanging about. Excuse me, but Zoe is quite OP. If she tried, I reckon she could do a tornado and she's worried about Nefereth. Just, just hit her with some wind and blast her off like Team Rocket. No matter what happens, I want you to promise me that you'll remember Kelowna must not rise. Nothing and no one is more important than that. Yeah, but he kind of does, so... Zoe goes to bed and wakes up. The full moon candle was still burning, though it was definitely smaller than when I'd fallen asleep. That's how candles work. Aphrodite, Neferet, and Shekinah come in. Grandma has been in a car crash because a big blur, blurred, blurred, a big, it was the best of times, it was the blurst of times, a big bird flew into her windshield. I forgot that this happened. She should have just stayed put. Why did she go off driving when she knew evil things were lurking about and going on? Idiot, some wise woman. <sighs> she's not dead, but she's in intensive care at the hospital. At this point, I want some Skittles or a Coke or an entire bag of sugar. I googled what sugar cravings mean and it says something about wanting magnesium, but who cares? I don't want magnets in my body anyway. Zoe wants to go to the hospital to see grandma. Nefret hesitated for just a second. Yes, of course I do. I was just concerned about Aphrodite falling behind. I'll take my homework with me to the hospital. I won't fall behind. Aphrodite gave Nefret a big reassuring smile that was as fake as Pamela Anderson's boobs. What did Pamela Anderson do to you? Your grandma's just been in a car crash and you're just gonna like, roast Pamela Anderson for no reason. Is Pamela Anderson not a vampire in this world? Because every other celebrity is. Would vampires still get boob jobs? Or could they just like pray to Nyx and magic magically make them a little bit bigger? This is the stuff we really want to know about. Neferet and Shekinah leave. Maybe it's time Nyx or someone told Shekinah what was going on before more people coincidentally get into car crashes and slash or die. I nodded. Yes, we do. This nanny cam thing won't reach all the way to St. John's, will it? Probably not. I think the range is only a few hundred yards. Then while I'm getting dressed, take her to the twins' room. Tell them what's happened. And also tell them to warn Damien and Jack about Neferet. Do you want Aphrodite's back to break from carrying this entire series? This is what I said at the time, because at the time I had Skittles, but I finished writing this like two weeks ago. Remember how I said I wanted Skitt Skittles? I literally manifested them. I thought long and hard about how I wished I had Skittles. And then I went to the shops and used my money to buy some. Manifestation works. They go to the hospital with Darius. Okay, it was really scary in intensive care. We hesitated, not sure whether we could actually go through the swinging double doors that had intensive care emblazoned and red across them. Then I remembered that they had my grandma in there and I marched resolutely through the intimidating doors into Scaryville. Yeah, calling it Scaryville really helps communicate the severity of the situation. A doctor told them it's serious but looks good and they've induced a coma so her brain can heal. Zoe goes to see her grandma. Whilst in intensive care, a medicine man can't sit with grandma but a nun, a nun can because it's a Catholic hospital. So I'm guessing they wouldn't allow a rabbi or an imam then, which sounds like some type of ism to me. Not sure which, take your pick. Zoe knows what nun to call. Chapter 29. It's only been about two days before this book began and so much has happened considering they keep saying that they will do a flea market next month to raise money for the Street Catch charity. I think it will be about like seven books before that event actually happens. Time passed weirdly in the ICU. There were no outside windows and except for the sci-fi thrums and beats and clicks of the hospital machinery, the rooms were dark and quiet. I imagined it was a kind of waiting room for death, which completely creeped me out. Really takes the stakes out of things when you know for sure that God and a cushy afterlife exists though. Why bother with all the Nefret drama? Let a raven mocker eat you and then go chill in the afterlife afterwards. It sounds better than dealing with all this. 
Sister Mary Angela appears. I looked quickly up at Sister Mary Angela. The hospital doesn't know I'm a fledgling. It shouldn't matter what you are, the nun said firmly. If you or your family need succour and care, they should provide it. Needing care and what now? Then she reached into one of the front pockets with, of her voluminous black habit and drew out a small but beautifully detailed statue of the Virgin Mary. <laughs> she just carries a rumba. Would it ease your mind if I left Our Lady here with your grandmother while you and I speak? I nodded. I think it would, sister. I said, not trying to analyse why I should be so reassured, reassured by an icon of the mother of Christianity that a nun had brought with her. I was just grateful my gut was saying that I could trust this nun and the magic she carried. Is Nyx also the Virgin Mary? Because I don't know how Christians are going to feel about their idols being vampirised. Want to walk over by the fountain? I asked. Did that again. Like, it looks weird. I don't know why. Even saying want to walk, want to walk, is informal enough. Because it's not like, do you want to walk? Would you like to walk? Want to walk? It's like, want to? I've just not seen it much before. The only other time I've seen it was like in the last chapter. Zoe tells Mary Angela about the Raven Mockers and Kelowna. Grandma reminded me that magic is real and that her ancestors, who were really my ancestors, weren't any more or less believable than a girl who can summon and command all five of the elements. Are you saying that is your gift and why you're important enough to require a warrior escort to street cats, Sister Mary Angela said. Can we go one chapter without someone force feeding us how important Zoe is? Zoe shows off by summoning the elements because the sister didn't believe her. The cool wind suddenly went warm, hot even. I could hear the crackling of a blazing fireplace surrounding me and it felt like Sister Mary Angela and I were getting ready to roast weenies on a balmy summer night. Roast in what now? Why doesn't Zoe use the spirit element to make her grandma feel better? She can do that, you know. Thank you, spirit, earth, water, fire and wind. Water, fire, air and dirt. Fucking magnets. How do they work? Mary Angela agrees to guard grandma against any evil spirits while Zoe is busy saving the world. You know, standard nun duties. Then I turn to the nun who looks so serene and otherworldly sitting in the hospital chair, fingering her rosary in the small flickering. You already know it's coming. Fingering her what now? I'm calling it. One of the cast duo was horny during this chapter. I don't want to guess which one. Zoe warns the sister that if Kelowna rises, they must all seek safety underground. She leaves. Again, why doesn't she use her spirit power on her grandma? Duh. I would make a much better chosen vampire than Zoe. Chapter 30. Three more left. Three more left. Darius picked Zoe up. Darius nodded and swung the car around so we could head the short distance back to the school. Sister Mary Angela is a powerful priestess. She would have made an excellent vampire. Of course she would have. This is a universe where Garth Brooks is a vampire after all. You are cutting it pretty close though, Darius said, glancing at the digital clock on the dash. You have barely enough time to change your clothes and get to the east wall. That's okay. I'm great under time crunch pressure. I lied. Well, I do believe Aphrodite and the rest of the group have everything prepared for you. Of course they do. This is a universe where Zoe does f sweet fuck all after all. Oh my god, is your grandma okay? I was so upset when I heard. <laughs> that was unnecessary, wasn't it? Jack burst like a little gay tornado into the dorm room. But I thought Damien was the wind affinity. I don't know if that makes sense. So, what's the word? Is she going to be okay? Erin asked. Yeah, Aphrodite wouldn't tell us shit, Shawnee said. I told you everything I knew, Aphrodite said, following everyone else into my room. And that was we wouldn't know anything for sure for a day or so. That's still all we know, I said. But it seems good that she's not getting any worse. Why are they giving Aphrodite grief for nothing? She has literally just existed. We get a whole description of what everyone is wearing. Very ebony, darkness, dementia, raven way of Zoe. Of course, I'd never mention that to the twins. I was wearing a new dress Erin had picked for me. It was black, but it had little red glass beads sewn around, sewn around the neckline and the long tight sleeves, as well as dangling from the skirt that ended just above my knees. It fit me perfectly, and I knew when I lifted my arms to invoke the elements, the moonlight would shimmer like blood off the decorative glass. In other words, it would look majorly cool. If you add swear words and lots of typos to this, it would read just like my immortal. Okay, so the ritual will pr go pretty much like it always does. I'll come in to whatever j music Jack plays. Jack nodded enthusiastically. I'm ready. I'm ready. The best parts of the Memoirs of a Geisha soundtrack mixed with something else is what you're going to come into. But I'll wait and surprise you with the something else part. I've never seen Memoirs of a Geisha, so thanks for nothing, Jack. My God, you're useless. They are ready to kick ass and drink milk. And they're all out of milk. Chapter 31. They're at the East Wall. Everyone is gathered there. Shekinah tells Zoe that in a ritual this size, the vampire, a vampire's blood should be mixed in with the sacrificial wine and that Eric has offered his blood. I'm sure this is very important. Jack, I whispered violently. Jack. Eric playing Lauren's part tonight is not what I'd call a good surprise. Jack frowned. Damon, I thought it would be. It just shows that you guys can maybe try to talk to each other. Not in front of the whole school, we're not. You're idiots. Oh, um... I didn't think about it like that. Jack's lips started to quiver. 
Sorry, if I'd known you'd be mad, I would have told you first thing. What baby? Zoe is worried the entire school will see that she enjoys the blood wine. I think you've got bigger problems right now, but okay. There's poems and dancing. This is my ninth circle of hell. Zoe cuts Eric's cut Eric's hand so he can spike the wine with his blood. As Zoe cuts the circle, the group drinks the wine. Her friends don't like the taste of blood yet, so surely the blood wine has to be gross to them. Like, wouldn't that make you vomit? Stevie Ray hasn't appeared yet. I closed my eyes and prayed. Goddess, I'm counting on you to make this work. Or at least if I make a fool out of myself, I'm hoping you'll somehow get me out of it. Again. Yeah, don't worry. She will. Zoe tells the audience about Aphrodite not having the earth affinity. Stevie Ray appears from nowhere. Chapter 32. Everyone starts shitting themselves at the sight of Stevie Ray. So Zoe finishes her circle to protect her group. House of Night, listen to me. Everyone fell silent when they heard the power of the goddess magnifying my voice. I almost fell silent too, as shocked as I was by it. She can't even yell without goddess interference. Free will, my ass. Zoe tells the truth, except amidst the part that Neferet was causing all of this. Stevie Ray confirms to Shekinah that she died and came back, but again doesn't mention Neferet. Hello, anyone? Aphrodite stepped forward, actually moving into the glowing silver thread that held our circle as one. I expected to see her get zapped or bounced back or something terrible, but instead the thread gave, allowing her to walk through to me. When she joined me, I could see that her body was outlined in the same glowing silver thread that still held our circle. That's nice, I suppose. Aphrodite admits that Nyx changed her into a new type of human too. See, because she changed her back to human, but not a normal human, a new type of human. So Nyx is like the god of the humans as well. So why does she favour the vampires so much? Hmm. The other red fledglings appear. Nefre appears to piss me off again. You ask us to accept a perversion of nature as something the goddess made. She spoke in her deep, beautifully modulated voice. Those creatures were dead. They should be dead again. Shekinah and the sons of Erebus should be able to see through this false logic, seeing as all the red fledglings are inside a Nyx circle and they aren't burned into death, but okay. Zoe is all, you tried to use them. Again, why is no one mentioning Nefre made them? Nefre blames Zoe for raising people from the dead. Like, that is not believable. Zoe is like 12 years old and she's been a fledgling for less than two months. It's ridiculous logic. Nefret's eyes scoured the crowd until they found him. Then she snapped. Jack, do you deny that Zoe made you plant this in the morgue where you locked the body of the recently dead James Stark so that she could watch to see when her wicked spells would resurrect him? No, yes, it wasn't like that, Jack squeaked. Duchess, who was pressed against his legs, whined pitifully. Like, could he be any more useless? Why would you even answer that? Why won't you just be like, I'll blow off? Like, you know what I mean? Aphrodite points out that Nefret isn't wearing her goddess insignia, but instead is wearing a necklace with black raven wings. Nefret's hand moved automatically to stroke the black wings hanging between her breasts. The sons of Erebus, Nyx's consort. Um, excuse me, but no, they're not, Damien said. Erebus's wings are made of gold. They're never black. You taught me that yourself in vamp sock class. Look, I know what's about to happen and the other mature vampires should be able to see through the following bullshit, but apparently none of them paid attention in vamp sock class either. Stark has risen, but he's a bit like a zombie. Said I'd come back to you, he murmured. I smiled through the tears that were filling my eyes as I moved closer and closer to where he stood just outside the circle. I had opened my mouth to tell him it would be okay, that somehow would figure out a way for it to be okay, but Aphrodite was suddenly there beside me. She grabbed my wrist, pulling me back from the edge of the circle. Don't go to him, she whispered. Nefre is setting you up. Again, useless for Aphrodite. I wanted to shake her off, especially when Shekinah's voice came from the other side of the circle. What has been done to this child is quite horrible. Zoe, I must insist that you close this ritual for this evening. We shall take the fledglings inside and contact the Council of Nyx to come and judge these events. I feel like Shekinah is quite useless, considering Nefret is over there losing the absolute plot and she's doing nothing. Zoe finally says that Nefret is the one behind the red fledglings. Nefret laughs in Shekinah's face. Shekinah does nothing useful except again tell Zoe to close her circle, which is obviously a bad idea. Everyone in this book sucks. I should be all of the characters. I would make all of the correct decisions. Nefret commands Stark to shoot and make the earth bleed. So Stark shoots Stevie Ray with an arrow. Stevie Ray bleeds out all over the earth, which soaks up the blood and Shekinah still does fuck all. My name is no longer Nefret. From this night on, call me Queen C. Sigili. No. Chapter 33. The ground begins to shift and Zoe's crew keeps her circle unbroken. Eric joins them. The oak with a horrible ripping sound tore apart. I'd been walking backwards, helping to prop Stevie Ray up from the front. So I had a clear view of the tree when it split. 
From underneath the middle of the, the destroyed oak, a creature rose. At first, all I saw were huge black wings that completely unfolded something. Then he stepped from the destroyed oak, straightening his mighty body and unfurling his night-coloured wings. Oh, goddess! The cry was ripped from me at my first sight of Kelowna. He was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. His skin was smooth and completely unmarred and was gilded with what looked like the kiss of the sun's loving rays. His hair was as black as his wings and fell loose and thick around his shoulders, making him look like an ancient warrior. His face... How can I... Is it just Edward Cullen? How can I ever fully describe his beautiful face? It was like a sculpture come to life and it made even the most handsome mortal, be he human or vampire, look like a sickly, unsuccessful attempt at imitation of the glory. His eyes were the colour of amber. This is literally Edward Cullen. Shut up. So perfect. They were almost golden. See? I found myself wanting to get... I got too excited then. I found myself wanting to get lost in them. Those eyes called to me. He called to me. Oh, good. It's another man for Zoe to want the shag. Raven mockers appear around Kelowna. Like, this book loses the plot. This is Erebus. Come to Earth finally, Neferet pro proclaimed. Bow to Nyx's consort and our new lord on Earth. Many of the watching crowd, especially the fledglings, instantly dropped to their knees. I looked for Stark but didn't see him. I did see Shekinna begin to stride forward, picking her way around worshipful, worshipful fledglings, her wise face guarded, her expression fixed in a deep frown. Shekinna still doing sweet F all. Nefret lifted her hand and made a slight flicking motion with her wrist. It was a gesture so small and insignificant that had I not been watching for it, I would not have seen it. Shekinna's eyes went wide. She gasped, grabbed her neck and then crumpled to the ground. The sons of Erebus rushed to her body. That is what you get for doing nothing. Zoe rings sister Mary Angela and tells her to get underground. Darius joins them. Zoe uses the elements to disguise them all from Nefret. They escape. The cats join them too. But thank God, don't forget the cats. They decide to head to the tunnels. The depot. That's a good three miles away or so. Through the heart of the city, he said, how are we going to? His words broke off as we heard terrible screams coming from all around us outside the house at night. Bright balls of fire were blossoming in the sky like terrible deadly flowers. What's happening? Jack asked, moving closer to Damien. It's the raven mockers. They have their bodies back and they're hungry. They're feeding on humans, Aphrodite said. Do the humans ever notice that there are bird men eating people or are they all that oblivious? They all turned to mist and shadows. We moved out into what had become a city of living nightmare. I wondered later how we ever made it and realised the answer even as I wondered. We made it because the guiding hand of Nyx was on us. We moved in her shadow. Covered with her power, we became the night, even though the rest of the night had become madness. You mean you made it because of plot armour? Before we reached the halfway point near Cincinnati and 13th, I heard police and fire sirens along with gunshots, which made me smile grimly. This was Oklahoma and us Okies do did love our guns. Yep, we exercise our Second Amendment right with pride and vigour, good old America. They make it to the tunnels. Zoe rings Heath to warn him. He accepts it. She rings her mum who doesn't answer. My mum didn't answer. The phone went to voicemail after five rings. Her overly perky voice said, This is the heifer residence. We love and fear the Lord and wish you a blessed day. Leave us a message. Amen. What? She goes down to the tunnels to her friends. Please, Nix, I sent up one fervent, silent prayer. Give me strength and help me to say this right because how we begin here is going to set the tone for how we live here. Please don't let me mess up. She can't even talk to her friends without asking Nix for help. I don't think I've read a book with as much obvious favouritism. Yeah, said Jack. We're here because there's something about us. Something special, Damien said. Damn special, Shawnee said. I'm with you on that twim, Erin said. We're so special. When you look in the dictionary under short bus, there's a group picture of us, Stevie Ray said. Sound of week, we're definitely all... <sighs> Goodness sake. Leave people alone. Also, poor Stevie Ray is just lying there with an arrow sticking out of her chest, waiting for Zoe to hurry the hell up. And that is the only time I will say poor Stevie Ray. All right then, I said, let's go get him. And as they all yelled dorkishly after me, I felt an awesome tingle spread from <laughs> spread from my fingertips to cover the palms of my hands. And I knew when I pulled them out of the hand pile, I'd find brand new intricate tattoos decorating each of my palms like I was an exotic ancient priestess who had been henna marked as special by her goddess. So even in the midst of craziness and exhaustion and life-changing chaos, I was filled with peace and the sweet knowledge that I was walking the past. The goddess wanted me on. She didn't even do anything. Aphrodite should be the most tattooed fledgling in history. And I love how like, I'm not even saying words properly anymore. I love how like these these raven mockers are literally going from the sky and eating humans and Nyx don't give a shit. Like humans are getting killed right now. Zoe says a few words to her friends and she gets like special tattoos marked. She, like, I think you've got bigger priorities, Nyx, right now. Do you know what I mean? Not that the path was smooth and pothole free, but still it was my path. And like me, it was bound to be unique. That last line is like a gun to my head forcing me to accept how unique and special Zoe is. I've had enough. 
the end finito thank you so much for watching listening whatever that was book four i will do book five next month i gotta do another book this month before i do i don't know probably two more colleen hoover books because you like that so much but i gotta break it up a little bit thank you so much to express vpn for sponsoring today's ep episode what was that oh god it was a raven mock or something jesus thank you so much for expressvpn for sponsoring today's video make sure you use expressvpn.com forward slash elise get three months free on a 12 month plan make sure you check out my merchandise site thank you so much to rich weights for helping edit this video yeah i'll see you very soon i won't leave it a month this time bye <laughs>